We've been in a series the last um, six weeks, eight weeks. We started in the beginning of the year actually on worship, and we walked through that. And then um, the last two weeks, um, Pastor Lindsay and Pastor Julie really just shared from their heart what this idea of undivided devotion looks like in your life. And and I thought even last week, Pastor Julie just gave us such a great um, a vision and envisioned us toward what it means to live this life of an undivided, devoted heart. And as I, as I was really just asking the Lord where we were at in this season, and, and, and I have to tell you that there's still a little bit of that lingering, like, gosh, what happened last year, 2020 kind of stuff. Is anyone with me? Yeah, I mean, it's one thing like the calendar turned, and so it would be nice if we just said like, whoop, it's gone. But the truth is, there's still a lot lingering. And I think there's a lot lingering in our hearts and in our relationships and in society. And so I don't want to focus on that, but I don't, want to, I don't want to ignore it. I want to acknowledge that it's there. And so as we talked about worship, I began thinking about um, really what our response as worshipers are it, like we define that worship is just this display of worth, attention, and affection toward God because He's God and God alone, and that we were all created to worship something. We don't have to agree that you were created to worship God. I I believe you were created to worship God. The evidence of that is is that no matter where you're at in relationship to God, you will do everything in your life possible to worship something. You will give worth, affection, and attention to something, and it's proof. Like it's built into us. And so I really felt like we needed to talk about some rhythms of worship, some things that we need to get into the rhythm of doing and that are really important and why. And so this morning, I'm going to define what that means, but this morning, I'm actually going to read out of the book of Luke, chapter 22. I'm going to start in verse 14. Now, to give you some some pretext to what's happening in this passage. Jesus is about ready to go to the cross. He's about ready to go and give his life so that he can overcome and become victorious over the very things that are separators between us and our relationship with God. And we're getting ready to actually walk into this season. In the next four weeks, we have Easter. I'm going to call it Resurrection Sunday because it is the day that we celebrate that Jesus resurrected from the dead. It's so much more than just this word Easter. And, uh, and we began this last Friday night, something that we're, we're calling the returning, and it simply is just a night of undevoted or devoted, undivided heart attention aimed at God. And so this last Friday night was awesome. And we had people joining us on our online campus and, and here physically. And it was just, it was an incredible time. And as we walk through these next four weeks, I really wanted to lay out just some, some rhythms and talk about some rhythms. Today, we're going to talk about the rhythm of communion. Next week, we're going to talk about the rhythm of community. And this is going to take us from our Sundays to our Fridays as we gather together into Good Friday and into this day of Jesus' resurrection. Now, in this passage I'm about ready to read, Jesus has been walking with the disciples. He's been, he's been declaring this message of, of good news, of hope. And he says to his disciples in this part of Luke, he says, hey, I want you to go and prepare this place that has been readied in advance, but I need you to go and I need you to take care of setting some things up. And they're getting ready to, to celebrate Passover And it's this beautiful depiction. What we're, what we're going to read is, is the Last Supper. It's this beautiful depiction that sometimes we've, we've seen painted, we've seen, um, you know, made movies of and, and pictures and songs. And we talk about, it's, it's the image of Jesus reclining with his disciples, having the last meal before he walks into the trial and ultimately his death. And this is this moment that we're walking into where Jesus is, He's getting ready to have this meal, and, and he gives us this amazing prescription of a rhythm that we should keep. In verse 14, it says, I, I have to forgive me, I have to put these on. This is the first time you've seen me don these in public. <clears throat> these, just ma hey, these just magnify what's already there, okay? So I'm just going to like... 
looks good, yeah. All right. Verse 14 says, When the time came, Jesus and the apostles sat down together at the table. And Jesus said, I've been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. Now, why was he eager to eat this meal? He's getting ready to die. Why was he eager to eat this meal? There's something in this anticipation that Jesus has that we're going to talk about in a second. But I want us to be attentive to the fact that Jesus was expectant and he was looking forward to this meal. And it wasn't directly because he was getting ready to die. It was because of what was going to come out of it. Okay? So let's hold tight to that. He says, for I tell you, I tell you now that I won't eat this meal again until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And then he took a cup of wine and he gave thanks for it. Then he said, take this and share it among yourselves. For I will not drink wine again until the kingdom of God has come. He took some bread and he gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it into pieces and he gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body which is given for you. And do this in remembrance of me. Do this. This is a command. Do this. It's not a, hey, I kind of have a suggestion here. He's like, you need to do this. You need to keep a rhythm of communion. You need to keep a rhythm of this moment. I don't want you to forget what's about to happen, and I need you to keep doing this. Now, I'm going to describe rhythm really quickly, because I, I think when I say a rhythm of communion, or if I say, like, let's talk about some rhythms of worship as worship, I want us to understand what rhythm is. <clears throat> um, probably the best way to describe this is um, I'm going to have Joe, our drummer, come out. I'm going to have Jordan who was playing keys come out, and I'm gonna have Eric, who was playing bass, come out. And I'm gonna essentially walk us through, because I think it's important that we not only cerebrally understand what a rhythm of communion is, but I want it to resonate in us, and I want us to feel it, I want us to hold on to it, I want, us, I want it to be buried in our hearts, okay? So if someone can find our drummer. So here's what's great. <clears throat> this is what happens when the pastor throws his message out. And just says, let's do this. So you're going you're to see some behind the scenes kind of stuff. A rhythm is defined as a strong, regular, repeated pattern of movement or sound. A strong, regular, repeated pattern of movement or sound. You guys grab the drum, can you guys grab them? Okay. Someone flag them down, light a fire, send, a, send smoke signals. I would say send a text, but you guys with me? Who do we got? There's the crew. Everyone say hi. Well, aren't they? Dude, wasn't worship amazing? Wasn't it awesome? <laughs> you guys are like, two of you. Woo. The rest of you are here, like, we're here for the preaching. I show up late. I just skip the worship. The music doesn't matter. I'll let that lay where it might. So here's what we're going to do. I'm, I'm going to kind of pull back. I'm going to pull back the, the, the curtain a little bit, a little bit behind the scenes. And I'm going to utilize music as a description for rhythm and communion. Jordan, you're, you're controlling the click. Can you, can you, um, can you guys hear that? 
it's very intentional, and it's, a re- it's repeating, isn't it? But it's not music. It's, it's just the standard. It's the line. It's called the click track. Now I'm going to have Joe, if you can, can you just, on the one, can you just like give us something? Now Joe's being very intentional. He's not just playing all over the place. So his rhythm is repeated and it's strong and it's intentional. And then Joe, can you begin to give us like, give us something that's resonant? Maybe, like, yeah. You can feel that a little bit better, right? And then Jordan, can you just begin to like come in and I don't know, play a progression. I don't know what you're going to play. Can you play. Six, one, four, five again. Is that what you're going to do? Mu- with this music talk. Now, they're both being very intentional. What are they doing? They're listening to each other. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you that rhythm is relational? Can I tell you that the rhythm of communion that Jesus prescribes in Luke when he says to the disciples, I want you to remember to do this. Do this. It's a command. I don't want you to do this one time. It's not an event and it's not about the elements, but it's about you having an encounter with me. That every time that you would do this, you would re-encounter, that you you would have an encounter with me in a personal way that would relate to me. The word communion, let me describe the word communion to you. The word communion means a fellowship, association, community, joint joint participation. It's a partnership. It means social intercourse. It means intimacy. And let me tell you, and proof of fellowship, proof of joint participation, proof of intimacy, proof of relationship. See, what's happening here in music is, is that there's a standard that's been set on this click track. There's a standard that's been set in our life. His name is actually Jesus Christ. He set the command. He said, do this. The click is saying, do this. And then Joe comes in and starts playing a rhythm that's repeated and it's intentional. And then what, what what's really fascinating is when music occurs, it's not just individuals playing what they want, a solo experience, but it's actually an encounter, a collective encounter that, that one another, that they're listening to what's happening and they're aligned to something greater than themselves, something that, that gives them a standard. That what you're hearing is the, is the resonant embodiment, an exhibition of fellowship happening. And that is what you all have come to love called music. It would be entirely different if they were playing to their own rhythm. That would be out of sync. That Jesus Christ gives us the rhythm of communion for one reason, so that our hearts and our lives would be in sync with his purpose, his promise, and his pleasure for us in our life. Now I'm gonna have them begin to just like I want you guys to just begin to fill in a little bit more space. And you're gonna hear, I'm gonna have Eric, when Eric drops in on the bass, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something that I, that I think is funny. So when you drop in, I want you to start like in the higher octave and drop and like let them feel that low resonant drop. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, watch this. So Duffy's gonna make sure that it's good in the house. You feel that? See, Jesus Christ created from the very beginning. Did you know that you and I were created to be in rhythm with the Father, to be in rhythm with Jesus Christ, that we were created from the beginning of time, that the origins of who we were was to actually walk in the rhythm of communion with him? This This is where we were meant to live. That what you're hearing right now, that what you're feeling right now, see, it moves us beyond just an event, just a, something that's happening, but there's something that happens inside of you when you hear this. There's a joint participation happening right now. We wouldn't call it music if they weren't participating. We would call it sound. 
Or let me be more specific, we'd call it noise, wouldn't we? That's just noise. So the Lord's Supper is an ordinance that is to be observed repeatedly, rhythmically. This is what Jesus is saying to us. Throughout our Christian lives is a sign of continuing fellowship, communion with Jesus Christ. In the very beginning, God says to Adam and Eve, I've created you and I've created you to, to walk with me. I've created you to be in my presence and I've created you that you could eat abundantly in the garden. Eat of the abundance of the garden. Just don't eat of this tree. And what ended up happening? There was a break in the intimacy that we had with the Father. There was a break in the intimacy of the relationship. Sin comes into the picture. Sin simply means missing the marks. Humanity, guys, we missed the mark. All we have to do is like watch the news for 10 seconds to figure out that humanity misses the mark sometimes. Be in relationship with somebody and you'll figure out really quickly that we miss the mark sometimes. And sin disrupted the rhythm of this. It disrupted the resonance of living life with Jesus Christ, living life with the Father in this presence-centered, rhythmic, intimate setting that there's this relationship happening. And God is such a good God. He's such a good Father that what He says is that I am going to pursue, for all of eternity, I am going to pursue the restoration of the relationship. This is relationship. And God, God's saying, I want to pursue the restoration of this relationship. We have to, we have to be in joint participation with one another. I created you for this. And what I love about it is that we see this marked in the garden and we see it in the Old Testament in Exodus 24, 9. It says, Then Moses, Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and the 70 elders of Israel climbed up the mountain and there they saw the God of Israel under his feet. There seemed to be a surface of brilliant blue lapis lazuli. It's like, it's like this stone. It's kind of like gold. It's this blue, blue stone with like gold in it that if it's polished and brought to perfection, it becomes almost clear, like, like the clarity of, of, of the sky. It's, it's this amazing, I, I, should, I should have got a picture for you guys. It's this amazing creation in a mineral that God put on earth. It says, and though these nobles of Israel gazed upon God, he did not destroy them. Do you know that you were created and I were created to gaze upon God? That the rhythm of communion brings us back to this intimate place that we can gaze upon the face of Jesus again? What Jesus was saying to the disciples was is that I want you to do this in remembrance of me because why? Because I want you to remember my face. I want you to put back together the memories you have of me. Why? Because I created you to gaze upon my face and this was broken in the garden, but what was broken in the garden, I'm going to restore on the cross. And then it says this in Exodus. It says, in fact, they ate a covenant meal. What do you think that covenant meal represents? Communion. Why? There's something deeply intimate about a meal, isn't there? When you want to get to know somebody, probably somebody who you have a quote-unquote interest in, you go and you, and you share a meal. There's something that happens if I invite you over to my house and we share a meal. There's something, like there's something powerful that was happening when God told Adam and Eve, eat from the abundance of the garden and walk with me and just share my presence with me. And there's this intimacy that's created. There's walls that are torn down. There's a vulnerability in that. And we see this depicted in Exodus in the Old Testament. He says, in fact, they ate a covenant meal, eating and drinking where? In what? In whose presence? 
God's presence. It's all about being presence-centered. So what does God do? God sends His Son, Jesus Christ, to restore an intimate relationship, and He gives the rhythm of communion to help us remember and to reestablish and bring us back into to represent this relationship. It's not about the elements. You can use like a Cheeto and some Yoohoo chocolate milk. These are tangible physical things that represent a spiritual truth. Have you ever lost somebody in your life? And you hold on like, I've lost people in my life and I hold on to the most random things that to you would mean nothing. And there's no power in that object except the power in the object is it makes tangible the truth that I hold about that person. This is what the rhythm of communion does. This is what the elements are meant to do. It's not about the elements, it's about the encounter with a living God and the place that he created for you and I to live in. In Acts 2.42, it says that all the believers were together. And we talked about this in the last couple weeks. All of the believers, all the followers of Jesus, at that time, that was 3,120. <laughs> all of them were together, devoted to the apostles' teaching, to the breaking of bread, in this case, the Lord's Supper and to prayer. And you, how often did they do this? If you go a little bit further, it actually says that they did this daily. That's a repeated, strong, repetitive pattern. They did this daily. Why did they do it daily? Because they were remembering what it was that Jesus Christ did for them, bringing them back into this place of personal relationship and intimacy. They weren't disjointed. They weren't disjointed from what God was doing. They began to release in their own life, they began to release the melody of their life interwoven into the life of Jesus Christ. Here's what I mean. When Jesus Christ died for you, when he died for me, the old life, the old stuff, the old traumas, the old difficulties, the old things that we had done were, were actually crucified and buried with Jesus Christ. And when Jesus was resurrected, the new life that he's given you was raised and you were given a new life, an opportunity to walk into a new reality as a new creation in a new covenant, in a new agreement, this word covenant, a, a new will and testament, a new agreement, a new disposition with God the Father. What happens? The rhythm of communion, it represents restoration. So it represents relationship and it represents restoration. So we get this picture of Jesus sitting and reclining at the table and he invites his disciples in. And what's happening is he's inviting his disciples to actually come back to the place of origin that we were created as humanity. We were created for in the beginning of time in the Garden of Eden. And he gives us this beautiful depiction and says, I'm going to take us way back to the beginning. I love God's restorative process. He doesn't just make it better in the moment. He actually takes it back to the beginning and makes it better than it was in the first place. I want us to understand this. God loves to restore. He's a God of restoration. And what he wants to restore for you is going to be better in a restored fashion than it was in the beginning. So he's made us for, the, he's made us for this moment. The rhythm of communion brings us to this place of not being shoulder to shoulder any longer. Communion, common union our hearts being woven together. See, what's happened with communion, Jesus is saying, your experiences in your life, the things that you've walked through, all the stuff that people have said to you, about you, over you, all the things you hold on to, you know the one negative comment that you hold on to, although there's a hundred positive comments, because we always remember the one negative and we forget about the hundred positives. You know that one thing? That one thing, that experience in your life, your life experience, is actually buried and resurrected in my experience, Jesus said. Jesus Christ stepped into our experience in humanity and experienced all the things that we would experience to the point of death. This is what the rhythm of communion brings to us. It's, 
It's, it's, it's this picture of we're not living side by side in a space with Jesus. You know it's possible to actually live in, the, in, a, in a specific space with Jesus but never have a relationship with him? I can be in a space with you and never relate to you. I'll tell you what, if this team right now was living in this space together but they weren't relating to one another, you would, hear a, you would hear different musicians playing to their own beat and it would be out of sync. You may not understand music, but you would feel it. And some of you have been feeling a disconnect with God. Some of you might have been feeling, and God is present, he's relational with you, but I think the rhythm of communion needs to be brought back to the forefront. Here's one of the most fascinating things. We're about ready to take communion. Get your cup out. You should have gotten a cup. If you didn't get a cup, raise your hand. One of our team members will get you one. If you're at home, you can grab anything. You can use your Cheerio and your milk. It doesn't matter. But something I found very fascinating. There's some positive things that came out of this last year. And one of the things that we're finding is that there is a, a high degree of returning back to spiritual practices of order. What do I mean by that? In a world of disorder, People are looking for order, and God is a God of order. So what's happening? This is, this is what I think is great about it. The younger generations, millennials down, statistically right now, they're the ones returning to practices of faith that are highly ordered. So things like, very prescriptive, I want you to get up every single day and I want you to pray. I want you to read the Bible. This is the passage I want you to read. I want you to read the Bible. It's rhythmic. It's repeated. It's orderly. It's prescriptive. Why? I'm going to tell you something. We are desperate in humanity for order in a world of disorder. We are desperate for the rhythm and the resonant power of communion as we step back in and represent the power of what Jesus Christ did on the cross to us in our lives. And when we do that, we begin singing our song of our life. God begins placing melody and lyric to your life. Dare I say, he begins to repurpose and he begins to bring back to the forefront the promise that he has for you. And some of us this year, Okay, I, I, again, I'm going to acknowledge, I'm not going to harp on 2020, but I'm going to tell you, there's still some, there's still some residue. If you're, if, you, if you're feeling residue from 2020, are you anyone with me? Okay, I want to tell you, God wants to reestablish the fact that he has a promise for you. And when we, we participate in the rhythm of communion, he's reestablishing the promise. The promise that he's going to restore through the cross, but he's also going to return and he's going to finish the job. It says in scripture that as we, as we eat of communion and participate in communion, that we're proclaiming the return of Jesus Christ. There's a promise attached to this. So we're just, we're gonna take a moment and we're gonna take communion real quick. Here's what I'd like you to do. I want you to, if you have the little cup, just peel it back. The first layer is gonna be a little cracker. Just peel that cracker back. And here's what I'm gonna do. Yeah. I'm just gonna pray, and as I pray, the band is gonna play. They're going to give us the sound of the rhythm of communion. And the girls might just begin to, to harmonize and just put some melodies over the top of what's happening. So Father, if you could just take, take that cracker and hold it in your hand. Father, I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus that what we would understand is that this is not, this, this moment is not about the element of bread. It's about the fact that you are the bread of life. 
It's about the fact that you have restored the relationship and brought us back to this intimate participation with one another. That in this moment, what we understand, maybe for the first time, is that our lives are woven into, that our hearts were no longer shoulder to shoulder, we're now face to face, and more importantly, we're heart to heart. And our hearts have been woven into your heart, and your heart is woven into our heart. There's a joint participation. When we, when we walk into the rhythm of communion, there's a joint participation. Go ahead and eat the cracker or whatever it is that you have that represents. And then I want you to take the cup. It's juice. And as you drink this juice, what I want us to be mindful of, is I want us to be mindful of, is as, as you drink this, th this represents the blood of Jesus Christ that washed over all of the old stuff. He gave his life, he is the bread of life, but his blood washed over all that old stuff that he became all of the things that we were supposed to be held accountable to. So Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would infuse us as we drink this juice and it actually metabolizes into, like on a cellular level, it metabolizes into our body as, it, it, as we swallow it and it actually gets moved through different, woven together. Then it's this picture that I have as we take this juice that we're literally participating in and we're being woven together with Jesus in a way that we maybe have never understood. that we're entering into this rhythm of... The rhythm of communion is an invitation from Jesus Christ to come to his table, to have an intimate, presence-centered relationship with him. And I want you to know something, as often as we do this, we are coming to the table of intimacy. We're coming to the table of relationship with Jesus Christ. We are stepping back into our original design, into what we were created for. I'm going to leave us with a challenge. Easy entry point. Easy entry point. Spend some time this week asking God, God, am I relating to you or am I participating? Am I in, am I in, am I in the room with you, but I'm not in a relationship with you? I want you to be able to walk out and take what you're hearing right now in the music as a representation to understand. Am I in sync? And am I in an intimate relationship with you? Are our lives woven together? Do I see it as that? Do I still see you as far off, God? Do I still see you as far off, Jesus? And then the challenge this week is that you, for all of you overachievers, because some of you, I know some of you are listening or you're in the room, you're gonna do this anyway, so I'm just gonna say it. If you really wanna be an overachiever, one time a day, stop, take a moment. Engage in the rhythm of communion where you come back to this place of intimate relationship, of presence-centered relationship with Jesus Christ and the restoration of grace, peace, and ultimately the love of Jesus Christ like you've never experienced. Father, this is what I pray. This is what I ask. Father, why don't you stand with me? So Father, I pray right now. You're on in the week and you're sitting at work right now. But whatever the space is that you're hearing this in, when you walk out of this space, 
that we would walk with a knowledge that you're a present Father, you're a present God, you're a present Jesus, you're a present. That you've given us the rhythm of communion. That we can be intentional with returning, through woven together, that what you did for us, Jesus, wove our hearts together, wove our lives. Knowing you through words to relational Jesus. And that we would step into an intimate relationship with you. That our, li that our lives would become a sound. God, that we would be able to represent to ourselves, represent to you the space that we were built for. Father, we thank you for this rhythm. Be Friday night as we gather together to worship again. And of course on Sunday, amen.